Porto Colom. I know you guys keep leaving comments about where are these places that I'm visiting. A Porto Colom in Majorca. And I don't know how to put a map uh, on the screen yet. I'll work it out someday. And then when I'm more advanced, you can actually see it on a map. Um, so walk through, starting right now. We're at the Flybridge. So we have um, joystick. That's quite interesting. Through shaft drives. I've not really played around with these before. If we're doing joystick through shaft. That's pretty simple. I've got to say, compared to the stern drives, that's actually, let me just test the other way. Feels quite smooth. Let me just slew it to the side. Wow. So the thruster activates when you slew the joystick to the side. That's kind of cool. Um, all right, that's that's something new, and you can just use it in, in the traditional method as well. Um, Volvo control, spotlight. We have our drink holders just here. This looks like uh, Garmin remote. We've got our twin flat screen Garmin's here. Volvo display, all your switches that you would need to operate the boat from there, and we can charge and store mobile phones in here. Visibility from up here is perfectly good. Uh, it's excellent, actually, and you'd probably drive from up here most of the time like we just did. You do get a bit of spray protection from this forward-facing plexiglass just here, and then you can walk around forward of the helm. Sam, why don't you come and take over from me? We're just going to use this nice background because uh, it's prettier than using the moored boats. Sam from Ancaster Marine, Richard from Ancaster Marine, take over, boys. Um, so let's, let's check this out. We've got a solid bimini up the top here, which... Uh, finishes just here, so it starts forward of the flybridge helm. It goes all the way to the all the way out to the full extremity of the flybridge. So everybody up until here is protected from the sun, uh, and obviously you get a little bit of rain protection as well. There's a lip hanging down the side, so you probably they probably have designed this. Uh, with clears in mind as well. So if you wanted to enclose this um, flybridge, I'd say that's going to be an option, or it could be done locally. Just check out, Scotty, come down here and film this because check out, don't fall down those stairs. Yeah, good. Just look at the amount of space we've got. We've got a forward facing seat here. This is movable furniture. And then you've got this wraparound lounge here. What do you reckon, 10 people? Scotty, 10? More. More, like there's heaps. And, and if you've got big legs or a belly, you could get under this table because there's heaps of space underneath. It's actually been built for normal size people to sit up here and have a, have a decent lunch. So that's pretty impressive. Let's check this out. Okay, we've got a Barbie, we've got a sink. That looks like hot and cold water underneath it. We've got some drawer or like shelves and an isotherm fridge. This is powder coated aluminium holding that all up. That looks pretty, it was solid, banging around through the waves that held true. And this door, I would close this door here. Uh, obviously it's for safety, but if you're gonna go through some sea like we did just there, that would move around. So it makes sense to close it. Coming down here, I think it's the space that hits me. I think it's the space that hits me the most because we remember we're only on a 50 foot boat, but it feels like a 60 plus foot boat in terms of the volume we have here. Like you and I, we're on a we're on a 72 foot boat right now. And the back cockpit has a similar amount of space as this. So that's that's what you get with a catamaran, guys. You know, it's it's just oodles and oodles of volume. So we've got these two tables here, they open up like that. We've got access down to both transoms and the transom setup on this boat is pretty unique. I'll have to use some drone shots for this, but we have a transom platform that can lower and then uh, marry up with the two hulls transoms. Obviously it stores the tender, but then when you're at at sea, it raises so you've got your full bridge deck clearance. But then the tricks don't stop. There's actually a storage garage underneath here, which um, contains the gen set and some electricals. I think I saw some batteries down there, but there'd be so much, there's so much space um, in the middle that you could do things like store water toys. We went electric foiling yesterday. If you haven't tried it, highly recommend it. Um, that's a great pastime or a great toy to have on a boat if you just want to have fun for a few hours. And I just see 
something like that being perfect on a boat like this because you have your tender you can have all your surfboards all your toys in here and then you keep this area nice and clean for your entertaining so what do we got around here we just got fixed seating on this side that's all very social you could put another eight or ten people there um, someone lonely can sit here and got an esky underneath a couple of big drink holders behind it that looks like an ice maker for a frigo the stairs are a decent size and the angle is actually pretty good with these grab handles and you've got this here so yeah that's all pretty good so let's go let's go around the decks this time let's not go inside just yet so going up one step there courtesy light opening hatches deck hatches just here facing forward so they'll suck some air down midships cleat and then you go up this little step here which is just grp and then another deck hatch going down into the cabins and another social area like how good's this movable furniture this is going to get wet it is wet because we've just been bashing through the sea but this is once again just showing you how much extra volume we've got to muck around with on a design like this because down here is an optional crew cabin i saw before in here i don't know what's in here so let's have a look okay well that makes sense all right so our anchoring operation our fender storage it's huge deep locker though just just have a look in there scotty and so <laughs> luma all chain and then the remote for operating it just here so the reason why that's so deep is because if you look on some of the drone shots in between the two holes there's that wave piercer that goes down that's the volume that we're utilizing through this hatch just here so it's got a, a dual function nice sun lounge there a couple of forward facing hatches drink holders um, this is just a big uh, oh watch actually i think this was a toilet when i saw yeah check it out Ooh. check it out scotty i just threw some water down there so but that's a proper so that's the crew toilet crew cabin on the port side crew toilet on the starboard side bow cleats oh pop-up lights imagine hanging out like right here maybe we should stay here tonight i think we should um so we'll make our way down here so if you were in a bit of a seaway i would use this to hang on to and this so that's probably part of the design thought process but you can hold on here hold on here then you've got a grab handle here and you can hold on that's really easy so that's that seems logical to me this hatch below me here it is engine access but there's more so let's just have a look their shaft drive d4 320s but just have a look down here it's, it's a little bit messy because they've been had the boat show on the weekend this is all i'm going to stand i'm going to stand on it can you get a sense of the volume down here so the engines are underneath these insulated hatches just here so we've just got some piping for venting through the engine bay just here you see the stairs behind me and then that's just the shower but this is a massive storage area which is replicated on the other side so just imagine what you can do with that think about it if you're doing med cruising everybody gets off the plane with these big uh, bulky luggage items so you don't really want those big items in your cabin so if people could go and take their bags and their clothes and pack the cabins make it all neat and organized for your week on the boat then all the luggage could go down in one of these quite you know successfully then while you are cruising if you were say doing australian style cruising and you've got rubbish that needs to be uh taken out of the galley you could have rubbish bins in that one so you can have your luggage and other once some items there you can have your rubbish bins and other cleaning stuff in that one and just keep the whole thing manage really really successfully because all your water toys all your surfboards your electric foiling boards could be in here or your diving kit that you could do that too because you've got access direct access to this platform here so if you've got tanks you can lower the thing down with all your heavy equipment so this has got a, got a lot of potential let's check out this interior scotty so you come around and let's go forward into here by the way i i haven't really explored this boat i'm just discovering it with you 
let's do this. So you enter with sliding door, which finishes there and glass, and then you have a glass window. It feels like a serving window just here. Then immediately to starboard, we've got the galley. So come and get all this in shot, Scotty. Some couple of unique things going on. Uh, obviously the fridge, stove, uh, cooktop, all your storage in there. I'm not gonna open everything up. I'm sure there's plenty of videos showing that. A uh, bit of storage under here, sinks. But just forward of the galley, you actually have this exit, opening door, sliding opening door, which is gonna give you a bit of fresh air and also keep this thing, or keep the galley vented if you are cooking. And it's designed for access for the skipper. But you also have this a pop-up TV which faces the saloon just there. So that's pretty cool. Um, how easy is the door to operate? Super simple. All right, I'll leave that close for now. Um, we've got some fancy plateware and all your prestige branded stuff going on in here for coffee cups and everything. And the saloon itself basically caters to the same amount of people as up on the flybridge. So if you've got a group of eight people, 10 people for the day, you can just go from zone to zone if that's what you choose. Comfortable, nice angle on the backrest. This is a very fancy marble looking table with stainless steel uh, table supports and some of the finishes up on top with the uh, strip lighting and then a couple of down lights here means this is gonna be a usable dining area of an evening. I like this wooden touches just here too. Doo -doo. That's cool. So. There is an amazing master cabin. We're gonna to get to that. Come down here, Scotty. All right, so this is guest cabin starboard hull. Two singles, they look like they move to me. I suspect, yep, they do, see, they're on track. So, boom, boom. I, I have enough space to walk around each bed so once again advantages of a cat we've got a little bit of storage in here we've got uh, power sockets on that side reading lights you could sit up in bed and you've got this view out through the window and then check out the head we have a head and a separate shower in here so marble finishings nice mirror light oak i think on the walls and opening hatch up the top as well so come on across. I'm gonna show you the other guest accommodation before we go forward, because it really does hit you that, oh my God, look at what we've just achieved on a 50 foot boat. So let's head across. So we've just gone up into the saloon, we've gone aft, and now we're going down. One, two, three, four, five, six stairs. Now I would say you can go aft to, this would be the day head, that makes more sense uh, compared to all the other toilets on the boat. We have a separate shower, head, similar marble finishings. And then this looks to me, actually it's just the same as the other cabin because this is two singles, they slide as well. So they could both be VIPs. What do you reckon? It just feels like maybe the other one's the VIP because the toilet's a bit more private. Okay, and that toilet, you've got to go through the door. But you've got proper cupboards, decent window, all your sort of standard finishings that you'd expect uh, to find on a prestige. So that's cool. Let's head up. I see some hinges under the stairs, something's under there, I don't know. And there's also something, uh, a, a deck access hatch just here. Let's just have a quick look. I like looking under the floors, okay. Nothing, I don't know what that's for. Let's, that window. Oh yes, that's a, that's a drop up serving window. I spoke about that before. Um, let's check out this lower helm. I haven't driven from this helm. That furniture gets in your eye line, so I'm not sure about that, but I guess if you were on passage and you're not maneuvering in the harbour, doesn't really matter because you have the option to go to the other helm. Um, what, driving like this, a little bit race car -y, throttle, yeah, it's doable. It works, I, I see what they're doing. They're using the available amount of space to the best of their abilities. Um, yeah, I, I'd be fine doing a long passage sitting in here. You've got air conditioning, I'm comfortable, I'm out of the sun, I can have air just going through here. And 
it works. It feels a little bit quirky for some reason. I don't know why. That's just something that's maybe just Dan's personal opinion. Uh, a little bit of storage in there. Fusion stereo just here, locker here, but come on down to this master. Check this out. Welcome to a full beam master that feels like, it feels like the master on the 680. Don't you reckon? It's bigger. It, it, it probably is. What is going on? We've got so much space. So yeah, wow. Um, storage, your own private lounge. You could have a sleep on this lounge or you could sleep in the bed and you've got your own office over there. Office makeup y kind of vibe area on the starboard side. A couple of mirrors where uh, completing the headboard of the bed with that timber look that we saw in the galley. So that's a nice cross over there. Some opening small ventilation hatches. No escape hatch, I note. Um, but ventilation and then fixed windows all the way around. Look at the views. Oh, love this island. And we come on down to the port side. Oh, okay, this is clever. Just stick the camera down there. You got separate shower, and then that means the loo's gonna be on the other side. I like that, because if you're here with a partner, one of you can use the shower, the other person go brush their teeth, and you've got your own spaces. So that's... That's quite clever. Remember guys, this is Prestige's first crack at a catamaran. So um, sure, you could look at areas where they might be able to improve, but I think for a first go, and this is the first boat, I gotta say, this is the one that's done all the boat shows. This is the loop, have a look in there. Privacy, space, volume, head height. How are you for head height? Scotty, walk you through this cabin. Six foot three. You're six foot three. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So let's come on back up on deck and wrap, it, wrap this up, I think. Um, I'm gonna sit right here in the saloon. No, I'm gonna give you this background. <laughs> Have a look back there, because it's lovely. So that's it, guys. This is just a quick opportunistic test drive and walk through. I wasn't expecting to have this. I would normally be a little bit more organized, but hey, we're here with the guys from Ancaster Marine. If you are looking for any of the Benito products, these guys, uh, they cover the whole region, uh, UK to the Balearics, and they're good blokes. We've spent a couple of days with them now. Um, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. If you enjoy this content, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to, but I enjoy everyone who does. Give us a like. Thank you very much, guys. I hope that was interesting to you, and I'll see you on the next one.